All right, you're right, Joe. Love them knives here. Helix. Cancept knives. Helix. H-E-L-L-X. And this model number, my friends, is the K1008 Alpha 1 in S35VN. It's titanium, okay, on the frame. Mikkel Willemson designed the Helix. H-E-L-L-X, not J-E-L-L-O. Um, deep carry titanium pocket clip. Looks like it's screwed on from the underneath. We'll take this one apart. Looks interesting, doesn't it? Now, if you're not into Mikkel Willemson designs, then this is probably your not, not your knife, you know? Uh, but I like it. He does some wonky stuff and very particular to him, you know? You see one of his designs, you just know it's one of his designs. And so he's done this one in collaboration with Cansep. Now, um, this one is titanium and S35VN. So it's 198 bucks before discount. If you get it on White Mountain and they have them on there, uh, you know, 10% off would be like $20 off. So more like 180 bucks, no tax, free shipping. If this is what you're looking for, the titanium. But if you ain't playing on the 180 plane and you still want a taste of the Helix, then why don't you get the one in G10 with a D2 blade? What? Yes. And yeah, they do. They make it. And yes, this is G10. And obviously it's not titanium back there. And it's a steel pocket clip. But it's, ooh, she's the hoss. I mean, same size, same dimensions as the titanium model. It's just got the G10 instead. And let's check this real quick. But I think, yeah, I mean, that's a steel liner. Not, of course, titanium, but it's not aluminum either. But it just still feels very light. This feels pretty light. Actually, the titanium one feels pretty light considering how big they are. Okay, let's go back to the titanium because we'll talk about the G10 one on another video. And I did, months ago, get a prototype from Cancept of the Helix. And at the time, it was called the Gas Giant. This was just a prototype. And so Mikkel sees that probably the transa translation didn't go through well and it shouldn't have been named Gas Giant. Okay, so not Helix is not the Gas Giant like Cosmically speaking, it's H-E-L-I-X, I believe. So, but regardless of that, yes, this knife is very similar to the actual production one. Take a look. Other than the name on the back side, it looks pretty much similar. And here we go. Flip it over. Um... See, they changed the location of the screws. They brought it in from underneath instead of on top. Interesting. What other changes can you see? Right off the bat, just in a cursory way, I don't. Um, but this feels light. Uh, and let me put this on the scale while we're doing it, and then I'll put a tape on it. But it's... It's a pretty good size knife. 5.8 uh, ounces. Oh, 160, nah, 166 grams. Okay. So here's the box. Halex, 3.62 inch blade. The K1008 Alpha 1. Comes in a nice slide open box like this. See how they do that? And then, of course, you got paperwork under here. And under that, you've got a little pouch where, and let me see if I can pull this paperwork out. They slide that right in as a tight fit. Come on out of there. And then, of course, you get a, a microfiber cloth, paperwork, and then you get a little pouch like this. And it goes in the plastic in this pouch. So it's not like a zipper pouch. It's not a Velcro pouch. It's this kind of pouch. 
and then in here a little bit of paperwork and uh, your microfiber cloth which just slides in here and it all slides together on this box here like that put this little joyride right here and let's see what we got well we got three and three quarter up to 3.62 like they were saying at about anywhere from 100 millimeters up to about 95 and then eight and three quarter overall at 22 and a half centimeters so that's an eight and three quarter inch long knife just shy of nine inches like i said it's a pretty good size knife it doesn't feel that fat so let's check it yeah it's not that bad it's like 49.49 uh, .49 of an inch so basically a half inch 12.6 millimeters blade stock 3.5 eh, 3 let's call it at 0.13 inch so and i don't think that changes anywhere here now nah. That stays the same at a half. It looks like it does, though, doesn't it? But it's just all these angles here. So it makes it look thinner, but it's not here. And you've got lots of jimping along this backspacer. Check that out. That's a long backspacer. Here's for your lanyard hole. Of course, they, they hid the screws here for a nice deep carry. Of course, right hand tip up only. And how do I disengage this uh, lock bar? Really easy here. This is pretty easy. Okay. So this does make for good fidget factor. Uh, check the flipper tab out. It's jimped, but it's small. I mean, really, it's pretty muted considering how big a hoss this is. But it's still pretty intuitive. Okay. Now, if you've got much smaller hands... You probably can't bury this in the palm of your hand and still reach this. So you may have to forego that and just get up on it like this, which is not a problem. But, okay, like that. And it kicks open pretty well. Uh, the detent to me seems appropriate. I can throw it out like that. Um, let me see if I can fail it. And that's kind of the issue here. Yeah, I can fail it. Yeah. Hey, if you want to know if a knife, if you can fail it or not on flipping, just hand it to a non-knife person. They'll fail a knife that you can't even fail. <laughs> it's, it's kind of comical watching them or frustrating, depending on who you are. But you just go, come on, man, just do this. <laughs> and they're like, and they're handling the knife and they're going, okay, hold on. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's always hysterical. Um, so <laughs> the jokes never stop. Um, yeah, and, and you can get this up here, this choil. It's a big choil. So you can put your finger up there. Oh, let me get a piece of prior printed out paper that we can recycle here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's sharp. I mean, it's all of that. That's not a problem. No, I mean, it's not that fat. It's not four millimeter thick. So, I mean, it looks pretty slicey, actually, and shouldn't be too much of a pain in the butt to sharpen and strop. So that's cool, even though it kind of does this little corner move here. Um, also, this swedge coming down here makes that tip more reinforced, but it looks pretty sturdy overall. Uh, the fit and the finish on these are really good. Let's look at the lockup. Uh, 30%, 30 to 35%. But it gets over that detent ball. It's already over. See that? It's already over the detent ball. So, I mean, there's a lot of knives when they break. I mean, they can go this far and still even that far before they clear the detent ball. But this one, it's over it. It's already over it. That, it's almost hard not to get it over it. There it is. But that, that was just cracking it. You know what I mean? And so, as long as that flipper tab hits you in the thumb, and that's a good thing, it's going to hit you in the thumb. So the blade's not going to come down and crush you. Okay? But it's still good fidget factor. And it's centered. Blade play lock rock. Uh-uh. And... It's centered, 
Look at the design flow. It's pretty good. Buries itself right in here and lines right up with this. So even as kind of angular and different as Willemson is, um, it, it still actually does flow. And mm, not bad as far as blade to handle length. I guess you could have crammed a little bit more in there but not much, maybe a 32nd, you know, maybe you could have taken it from the, the shortest length here of 3.62 to maybe a 3.66 or something for that part, but uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to bitch and moan about that. I mean, you look at the knife, overall it doesn't look disproportionate. If anything, it looks heavy blade-wise because the height of the blade compared to how slender this is in here, okay? Now, not a lot of grip factor here, but there's a lot of tactile capability in there. And then, of course, on top of the blade, a lot of jimping. And really, this, this really, for, I mean, if I'm going to open packages or do something, because it's such a big, long knife, I don't want to sit too far back behind the blade because I don't have control. So really, if I want to cut some things, you know, if I'm going to take a label off a box real carefully or, or you know, open things up, I think this is where it's got to be, and I feel good there. And I do, the ergos are fine here as well, because this is neutral, okay? And this is just the right size for my first finger. So yeah, that's fine. But here just feels, my second finger clicks in here. There's plenty of extra room. But yeah, this just feels so natural here like this. And really, it's weird. Even though it's, what, 5.8 ounces, uh, it doesn't feel it to me. It really, uh, it belies its weight. It feels, it feels lighter for some reason. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's spread out over a big distance here somehow. But it just doesn't feel that way and my balance is right there okay on this knife i mean just one more thing i mean here's the gas giant so this is the proto okay so lay this down this is 6.35 ounces 5.88 proto went on a diet before he became the functional stand you know production knife and it looks like we chose the right side. And we got number eights here. Yeah, I guess we do. So let's pop this dog apart. I guess here in a little bit when we put it back together, we should weigh this against the G10 version and kind of see if there, you know, what kind of difference in weight we have. So I'll try and remember to do that. Oh, baby. Whew. Okay. I guess it came apart. Um, yeah, we got uh, definitely weight relieving here. Here's a blade of roux. Here's a washer and bearings on one side. We got bearings on the other. Okay, so here's our blade. It looks clean. And there's our little detent track here. Okay, I mean, okay, fine. I mean, really not gooped up or anything. Kind of surprised. Um, okay, and there's our little ring around the ring rodeo track here where you've got this kind of little special area for these bearings to run. But just remember, guys, this is unusual. Most, most you know, washers are just flat. They don't have that groove in them. So there was a guy asking me, it's like, why knife doesn't have a, I mean, of just some other brand he had? He goes, I thought they all had. No, they don't. Okay. So that's unusual, but it, it, it doesn't really make that much difference in the operation of the knife as far as I can tell from knives that do have it or don't. But it's, it's kind of a nice little extra, I guess. I mean, that's the way I see it. And then here's the screws holding the pocket clip in as opposed to the gas giant prototype. And hardened steel insert with a ceramic detent ball. And of course, these are ceramic bearings. And here's your backspacer that I guess I could pop off if I wanted to and I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I could, yeah, here, here it comes, see. 
but no, nah, I don't I don't need to do that. So negatory. Leave it alone. Let's take a look at the uh, actual pivot. And you know, the pivot uh, came through from the back here, one piece, but it's not D-shaped. So just remember, although it has access for a number eight, so you can put a number eight on the front and the back, break it loose. So it doesn't need to be a D-shaped. So how do we put this Yahoo back together? Pretty easy because uh, it came from the back. So we'll just slide this in through the back, put the bearings on. They didn't look all gooped up or anything. So let's, let's decide to despoil the knife ourselves and goop them up. So we can say it's been properly gooped. And you can see that here's the track that this, you know, this stop is running on here. Okay. Um, and let's roll it around, put it in place. And of course, we're depressing that lock bar down. So we've got room for everything else on this side. And I'm going to put the bearings up here, leave this track here, down here. But the bearings, I'm going to put up on the actual blade here. And then really just plop it together because all you got is them two screws and the pivot screw once you've done that. So let's hope the washer doesn't fall off on me while I'm trying to place this on. And so far so good. And yeah, it snapped right back together. Just hunky dory, still pushing that lock bar. If you have to reconstruct it from the lock bar side, I mean, you gotta compress that blade onto that lock bar, um, you know, or keep that lock bar lined up in behaving itself so you don't have it popping everything out of position but uh, here we go pivot screw and it felt like there was a little some kind of i'm feeling a little thread locker in there somehow but uh, nothing of concern and uh, these are easy breezy right sometimes these have a hard time coming apart when you have a long backspacer because you have a long area of contact in here. And sometimes it doesn't come apart that well. But this uh, never had any problem, did it? It just flew apart. And no, I'm not going to put any more thread locker. I know there's some guys that put, you know, thread locker every time they reassemble a knife. No. I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I ever had a body screw come loose on me. Um, and I guess if one did, I mean, you can check them periodically. But if they did, okay. I mean, I'm not against using it. Shit, yeah. But I mean, I don't, I mean, if it's not needed, then I'm not using it. Um, and let's see how, yeah, I needed to go some extra to tighten this up. Now, are we centered? dead centered okay what do we got for action okay i think we're pretty darn good maybe a little on that we could break it just a little bit loose yeah and i could feel a little bit better action here a little bit better drop now am i still centered yes and do I have blade play? No, none. So, okay, it could take that and still be behave, uh, be lined up and everything, but still, you know, have nice action to it. Better action, actually. Okay, now let's see if I can fulfill my promise about weighing the G10 version against the other. And this is 5.55, so, wow. And this is 5.8, so... Um, really really close as far as the weight goes between these two and you know what uh the action feels a little bit different on the g10 not better or worse necessarily but just a little different uh but in this case you're getting a liner lock and yeah yeah but still Pretty interesting, 57 bucks, and then of course 10% off LTK discount code, so 
right? $5.70 off of 57 bucks. Um, free shipping, no tax. So, I mean, that, I'd say that's definitely a consideration for a good, good value for what you're getting. But the Helix, Mikkel Willemson and Cansep knives, interesting, the titanium version. Thank you so much. We do love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.